Hello everyone and welcome to yet another online lesson. Today in what could be the resurrection of a defunct channel, we will talk about verbal phrases. Now, it is important to clarify that verbal phrases and phrasal verbs are different things. Even though they may sound similar, they're actually not the same thing. So today we're talking about verbal phrases, which are actually a bit more abstract and harder to understand, which is precisely why we will work with some grammar principles that may help clear things up for us. The first thing that we need to establish is what a verbal is. A verbal is a verb that functions in a sentence as a different part of speech. Parts of speech, in turn, are different categories of words and they're defined according to their grammatical properties. Traditionally, we can distinguish between eight parts of speech. Nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Today, however, we will focus on verbs and nouns. A verbal may also work as an adjective or an adverb, but we will talk about them in a different lesson. So, how can we define the verbs and nouns? And how can a verb be both things at once, or even more? Our classical definition of a verb is a word used to describe an action, state, or occurrence and forming the main part of the predicate of a sentence, such as hear, become, or happen. A noun, on the other hand, is, is a word other than a pronoun used to identify any class of people, places, or things common noun, or to name a particular one of these, proper noun. What we will see today, however, is that both verbs and nouns can be so much more. Depending on the place it has in a sentence, its form and its use, a verb, for example, may be used as a noun or an adjective. So these definitions are all well and good when dealing with a sentence such as the dog ran. Here, it is evident that the dog is a noun and ran is a verb. The dog is a class of thing that we're talking about, and ran describes the action and forms part of the predicate of the sentence. In this case, ran is our predicate. However, let's look at this sentence. The dog loves running in the yard. The dog remains a noun in this sentence. The dog is the subject. The predicate, though, is a bit more complex now. If I ask you how many verbs does the predicate have in this sentence, going by our previous definition, you would say two loves and running. Going by the definition, you would be right. These are verbs. However, notice what happens when I change the sentence. The dog loves food. As you can see, love remains a verb, but running in the yard can be replaced by a noun, and the whole thing remains grammatically correct. This is because running in the yard was actually functioning as a noun in the previous sentence. Running is a verbal, and running in the yard is a verbal phrase. So a verbal phrase is a phrase that contains a verbal, a verb functioning as anything other than a verb, plus modifiers. Let's take a look at a couple more examples before describing the kind of verbal phrases we may encounter. The cat enjoys sitting on the mat. In this example, sitting is a noun, because it's a thing that the cat enjoys. Let's take a look at another example. While sitting on the mat, the cat saw a mouse. Sitting is an adjective. It modifies cat. It tells us the state of the cat sitting on the mat. It is important to note that a sentence that lacks a modifier, for example, the cat enjoys sitting, contains a verbal, but is not a verbal phrase because it doesn't have any other modifiers or items to the phrase. So what kind of verbal phrases can we find? Well, depending on the verbal, there are three kinds of verbal phrases we may encounter. Gerund phrases, which is the ones that we're gonna talk about here the most, contain a gerund, uh, or a verbal acting as a noun along with some modifiers. And remember, gerunds almost always end in ing. So a good example is our initial sentence. The dog loves running in the yard. Another common instance of verbal phrases in this case are when we talk about hobbies or pastimes. I enjoy reading fantasy novels. The second kind is infinitive phrases. Infinitive phrases contain an infinitive or a verbal acting as an adjective, adverb, or noun in various modifiers. Remember, these verbals are always accompanied by the word to. For example, it's not easy 
to buy a house in this economy. The verbal here is to buy, and the rest, in this economy, is what makes it a verbal phrase. Finally, we can find participle phrases. And participle phrases contain a participle, or a verbal acting as an adjective in various modifiers. Remember, there are two kinds of participles, present participles, ending in ing, and past participles, ending in ed or en. For example, speaking very sternly, the mother scolded her little boy. So, for today's class, and to illustrate the use of grammar I mentioned at the beginning, we will focus on the first kind of verbal phrases, gerund phrases. How can we identify when we're dealing with a gerund being used as a verb, or a gerund used as a verbal? Let's go back to our definition of verbs and expand on it. A word used to describe an action, state, occurrence, and forming the main part of the predicate of a sentence, such as hear, become, or happen. Grammatically, however, what makes a verb a verb is that it answers to a subject object, that is, who does the thing or suffers the thing, in some cases. It is also conjugated in a specific tense and it works as a nucleus of the predicate. Well, in the sentence, the dog runs, runs is in the present tense and it answers to the third person singular, hence why we add the S, and also it forms the nucleus of the predicate. So we know that run is a verb in this case. It complies with answering to an object or a subject, being in a specific tense, and also being the nucleus of a predicate. Nouns, on the other hand, we define them as a word used to identify any class of people, places, or things, or to name a particular one of these. And this works well in most cases. However, what allows us to identify a noun as a noun, or a verbal that works as a noun, is that it works as the argument of a verb, be it as a subject or an object. Once again, the dog runs contains one noun. Dog, in this case, dog is the subject, it is a thing that runs. And now that we broke from these definitions of verb and noun that we were taught in grammar school, and we can work with these more open definitions, these more open ways to look at words, it is easier to see how in the sentence, the dog loves running in the yard, we're actually dealing with only one and not two verbs. In this case, the dog is the subject attached to loves, while running is the object. It is a thing that the dog loves doing. Let's take a look at a couple more examples and at some tests that we can run to prove that a gerund is working as a verbal, a noun in this case, and not as a verb. I stop reading my book. The first thing that we can do is to ask a question. What did I stop? Reading my book. The second test is to substitute the verbal phrase in question with a noun in the traditional sense of the word. I stopped the car. If in both cases the sentence still works, then the part of the sentence removed or replaced is a verbal phrase. Let's try again with this other sentence. Watching her dance sent her into a tailspin. In this case, it can be even trickier because we are often told that the predicate of the sentence is the part of the sentence that has the verb in it. Well, what about watching? Isn't it an action or an activity? In cases like this, we need to find the main verb, a verb that answers to a subject object and that is conjugated in the tense. In this case, that verb is sent. The verb is in the past tense and its object is him. So now we can ask the question, what sent him into a tailspin? Watching her dance. We can also substitute the possible verbal phrase with a noun or pronoun. She sent him into a tailspin or whiskey sent him into a tailspin. Through these tests, we know that watching her dance is a verbal phrase. And that is actually the subject of this phrase is the thing that we are talking about. Finally, Here's what happens when we don't have a verbal phrase. I am looking for my car. Here, we have what appears to be a gerund, looking. However, in this case, it is a main verb. It is a thing that is being done. If I try to ask a question, it is even hard to formulate it. What am I doing? 
We could be tempted to believe that looking for my car is a verbal phrase because it is a thing that is being done. However, looking for my car is the actual action, is the thing that is being done. It is the main verb that forms the progressive tense when added the auxiliary verb am. This means that if we were to replace looking for my car with a noun, we would be left with something like this. I am a teacher. The way am works here is completely different from the original sentence. This is not a verbal phrase, but it is in fact a verb phrase. And that will be the topic for a different day. Well, I hope that this was easy enough to follow, and if not, well, leave a comment below. I've been Teacher Alec, and have a good one, and I will see you again in the virtual classroom.